Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Bloodborne No Healing walkthrough. This is going to be covering the lecture building, and we're going to be going from the Cathedral Ward uh, towards it. There are a, a few ways that you can actually do this and progress towards this particular part of the game, and they all involve getting something known as the Tonsil Stone. The Tonsil Stone is an item that only populates into the game after you've reached a certain point, and then when you talk to certain NPCs littered around Yharnam, uh, they will mention uh, about this particular quest, and then they will give you this Tonsil Stone. When you fall down the roof here, and you come over into this particular plaza, there's going to be two hunters. They are the Yaha Ghoul, the Unseen Hunters, and right there, I don't know what I was trying to do. I missed my visceral attack. Pretty interesting choice. Against a guy who has a rifle spear, which is incredibly dangerous. Uh, these are an enemy that, if you come here without decent weapons, you can have a lot of trouble. Just because the NPC fights in Bloodborne are arguably some of the tougher encounters in the game. Because the NPCs are... They cheat in an interesting way. It's not a cheated moveset. I'm perfectly fine with that. They cheat in the way that they are the computer. You know, if you dodge towards them and you attack, they will dodge it perfectly a lot of the times. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. You can completely learn to fight it. It's just a little disconcerting when you think you're going to be able to get an advantage and the computer dodges it really, really well. And it introduces you to the concept of a more frenetic fight because the computer is so adept at being able to dodge. Uh, one of the times where they're not so great at dodging is when they commit themselves to an attack. So if you can beat them to the punch, that can be incredibly effective, and of course if you hit them once and you get them to flinch, you can then continue to do increased damage. But the one thing you will notice when you play a lot of this game is that the NPCs are generally very defensive on your offense. Because they will typically try to bait you into the first attack, dodge it, and then punish you on that. And uh, this can be exacerbated by some of the more difficult NPCs, for instance, Eileen the Crow is, is a fantastic candidate for this, and additionally, the uh, the Canehurst Hunter, who's at the end of her quest, he is somebody who is fantastic at making you think you can get a good hit in on him, and then he'll dodge it and then do a dash attack at you, which does really big damage. So you want to be very careful fighting any NPCs. Additionally, uh, same with PvP, you know, humans will be even more dangerous because they can react to what you're doing without having to read your inputs. But this is a walkthrough to beat the engine, so we don't really have to discuss it too much. And I saw you pretty compelling way just then to take down some of those hooded, uh, robed executioners. And then as you pass forward to this doorway, as long as you have the tonsil stone, the amygdalan creature uh, will not kill you. However, it may miss you if you stand in the wrong spot like I just did. The moon is close. It will be a long hunt. Tonight. But this is the lecture building. We're taken here by that creature, and we're introduced to one of its serfs, which is the ever so trusty Patches, who is now in a very hit and miss spider form, which I'm not the biggest fan of. But this is a, a very beautiful, atmospheric area that doesn't really get too much service. Bloodborne is a game that leaves you begging, craving for more. It really does. It's It's got so many great qualities to it and so many things that make it enjoyable, but one of the things I think that FromSoft have always been very good at when it comes to the Souls games and Bloodborne is they're very good at making the levels a lot shorter than you would ever expect them to be. And the thing with game design it's a really difficult balance of having a level that outstays its welcome to having a level that's just enough to make you want to play through it again or to make you want to uncover more of it. And there, it's a double-sided sword, I think, because on the one hand, you have this perspective of, you know, if you know what you're doing, you can do it very quickly, very efficiently, and, and just get it done. And that's great for somebody who's wanting, you know, to do a quick run through something where they're just full function, full efficiency, I'm going to get to the end. But there are people who like to take the time, and then when you do that, of course, you're going to elongate that length. And those two mentalities can clash a little bit on this because... On the ones that outstay their welcome, to the people who like to see everything, and like to have a ton of areas to explore, it works perfectly for them because they have this capacity 
Oh, by the way, guys, when you go into this room, there's going to be a ton of dudes coming towards you. And if you funnel them towards this doorway, you can do some really good damage to them. I recommend, I think, electricity. Because I think it does more damage than fire. But I didn't have electricity at the moment, so that's why I'm using this. But uh, just be careful. These guys do have uh, Stretch Armstrong arms. And the frame rate definitely takes a hit here, thanks to all the custard chucking that goes on. And, and of course, they will hit you through the walls, because from will never fix this bullshit. It'll always be in these games. So there's the people that enjoy the, the longer stuff, but to me, I think you should always leave your audience wanting more. That's That seems to be the best balance that I think everybody should aspire to. Of course, you can have situations where it's intentionally a more endurance opted design, where it feels long and it's meant to feel long, but it has to have a purpose. Areas that drag on for the sake of dragging on that feel like they should be considerably you know, less long, are some of the worst areas in any game. Because you remember them for the wrong reasons. You don't remember them because they've got nice design or because they've got great, you know, architecture or really nice geometry. You remember them because you spent far too long there and you wanted to see something else. Like a good example of this recently would be Platinum Games. They made a game called Transformers, which I absolutely adore. But you spend a lot of time in this city and it's reused assets every time you're there. They give you a whole host of different things to do in it, which keeps it quite fresh. But at the same time, you can't get away from the fact that they're just using the city and people expect it to go all across the world and different places and all kinds of different environments and the game just never delivered. So whenever you are in the city and you realise you're in the city, it feels like you're spending a lot of time in that city. And it's that feeling of it can really outstay its welcome unless you focus on the combat. And that's one of the beautiful things about Bloodborne, only it can be bittersweet because we just want more of it. But that was the lecture building, guys. A very swift mission. Thank you very much for watching, and you take care now.